let's go no way wait i didn't actually think i was gonna get a talent wait what <laughs> let's go baby yes we are just over a day away from entering into kvk once again so today now is a good time to give you guys another account overview so you can see all of my commanders all of my equipment all of my armaments and yes i have quit being an infantry main starting with this upcoming kvk what's going on guys cheers now as you can see hua Shibing is in rise of kingdoms along with his mightiest governor counterpart justinian both of them are coming around in the next round which will be uh well the mightiest governor is in just a couple of days which means we are really really close to having hua on the wheel of fortune which is super exciting and that is why you saw me crafting this war helm of the hellish wasteland because this is a second cavalry set that i have been working on and while we're here let's go ahead and drop an iconic crystal here uh we got a special talent here which means we're gonna get an additional base defense point by doing that is base defense the best place to use your iconic crystals no but it's close and the fact that i get a bonus here is nice so let's go ahead and do it boom there we go ladies and gentlemen we have unlocked four more cavalry defense points for our nevsky oh it looks good baby that looks so good without further ado let's just jump right into this okay my first army that we're gonna go over here is my cpo prime with my Tarek secondary now before we go any further you gotta you gotta forgive me for the marauder thing that's gonna pop up here a billion times throughout this video okay as you saw we are in pre kvk even the crusade right here so there's gonna be a million people rallying everything i've been trying to keep up but we're gonna film this video if the developers are watching okay this kingdom title notification setting this is a blessing i love it it's very very good can we please get something like this for rallying forts okay obviously i don't want to remove it for like pvp but for pve stuff like forts marauder stuff like can we please turn it off please anyway let's go over my cpo with my Tarek. okay this is probably my strongest infantry army uh you could make the argument that i could do obviously a sargon primary with cpo secondary that would probably be a little bit stronger but i have to split up my sargon so that way i can pair him with my guan that's a little bit of uh foreshadowing we'll go over that in just a moment obviously cpo is expertise this is the best infantry commander in the game okay he has a massive aoe with a really powerful health debuff he also have has a ton of attack and march speed march speed is huge for infantry he also gives you health bonus bonus damage a small shield damage taken reduction for skill damage and also bonus skill damage here he does literally everything and then Tark behind him is literally just hitting things like a truck okay they're gonna have a health debuff because of CPO's active skill which means this 22 or 2500 damage factor nuke is going to be hitting that target right after which is crazy he also gives you a ridiculous amount of infantry attack and 10 bonus damage to cavalry which is very unique typically it's only five percent for skills like this which is nice and a little bit more march speed as well now as you can see here this is a 5515 Tarek, and that is if you're going to use it in the open field like that's what i would recommend i would not recommend expertise in Tarek for open field fighting uh, and here we have all, just 15 percent more damage which is insane and a rage reduction debuff which is really powerful eight second cooldown unfortunately but yes Tarek is you know he's kind of a vanilla just beat stick damage dealer uh he just pumps out so much single target damage and behind CPO he is a god okay I think whenever the next infantry come around Tarek it was probably one of the first commanders that's gonna fall out of my lineup here unless Guan Yu falls out of the lineup although I just can't imagine that AoE going away I don't know um uh, but Tarek is you know I'm I I love the damage output but I feel like he's going to be power crept sooner than most things um let's go over the equipment here you can see everything is legendary I have a talent on the uh, chess piece I also had to work really hard for the talent on the eternal night this is the only special talent I have that I actually like had to build up over time every other special talent you see I got lucky by just forging it and getting a talent okay so all my hope cloaks everything like that um I just got really lucky the eternal knight actually had to work for this the reason that I wanted this talented so bad is because when it gets the talent is when it becomes better than the Kurox humility which is the purple talented legs that give you health with the 16 percent infantry defense here it is technically better than the Kurox humility also um you get health base points when you uh put an iconic crystal into legs and I got a bonus one by having the talent here so four bonus health points is crazy as you can see here we have the ring and the horn this is the tried and true basically the best 
open field uh, damage output accessory lineup okay um so if you have a, a main dps march these are the best accessories to put on them i also had the hammer of sun and moon because i'm an absolute lunatic on here and i just wanted this like i just told myself i need it so here we are probably should have gone with the golden shield because then i would have got 10 percent more uh, march speed here but hey you know what it is what it is we went with stats over march speed we have an iconic crystal in everything except for the uh helmet and the gloves over here these are really not priorities for iconic crystals for me my priorities are go for talented accessories if you have any then go for regular accessories then go for talented items then go for legs and boots then go for everything else so that's the equipment here and then we go over the armaments okay and here you can see we have three inscriptions we have fine horse so an additional two and a half percent march speed we have eclipsed two and a half percent less skill damage taken and we have two and a half percent extra counter attack damage dealt which is very cool 9.5 percent infantry attack 3.6 percent infantry defense and 2.7 percent infantry health we also have uh 0.7 percent all damage here which is uh it's a little bit on the low end i wish it were higher but we have a boatload of stats over here to kind of make up for it so really good stuff as far as talent builds go i feel like this is the best talent build for cpo uh you grab rejuvenate obviously and you also grab loose formation and you just don't have enough points to grab emergency protection or anything else because you're gonna go all in on the infantry tree uh this is better than you think because you are grabbing a ton of extra march speed here and uh here and also here which is nice you can also snare the target as well and just a bunch of raw stats which is really really good as i mentioned before my second army is guan yu primary with sargon secondary this is definitely one of the best pairings for guan yu because sargon sort of makes up for a lot of things that guan yu is lacking for example guan yu has a massive aoe here three targets it silences them for three seconds as well you also gain a crazy amount of infantry attack here 30 percent and some march speed which you desperately need a little bit of healing factor as well which isn't that useful and then a bunch of bonus damage on the fourth skill here and i did expertise guan yu i do not recommend that anymore okay and I never really recommended that most of the time it's best to do five one five five if you can I know that that is one of the hardest configurations um it, actually that is the hardest configuration besides five one one five I guess uh to get but there's just no reason to get this skill that you will never rally with Guan Yu it's never gonna happen and Guan Yu is probably gonna be power crept out of the meta just like Zhang Yu was uh with Hua Chibin coming into the game so yes do not expertise Guan Yu this expertise is not worth the amount of sculptures you put in and waste for the second skill but i've gotten good use out of my guan yu so i don't feel bad about that expertise to be honest with you guys sargon packs the single target damage that guan yu is missing and he also has the odd debuff that he applies in an aoe fashion with guan yu okay so essentially anytime your skill damage hits a target they get the odd debuff so basically with guan yu you can hit three targets aoe which means three targets get the odd debuff this is essentially an aoe tamiris debuff which is insane this is infantry's version of tamiris except even better so i love that you can see here that sargon lacks a little bit in the attack department which is made up for by guan yu but he does bring some health here as well as some defense 10 percent extra defense and march speed more march speed you need this for infantry you also deal 10 percent more damage when attacking troops and 10 percent chance of increasing the damage by 30 percent for three seconds eight second cooldown and we also have a little bit infantry defense some additional damage factor here when you're removing those odd debuff stacks and a little bit of a shield you also reduce the skill damage you take by 15 percent which is really nice because guan yu is still a little bit squishy even with sargon i mean he gives you 20 percent health and 10 percent defense that's they're nice stats but it's it's on the low end so this tankiness on the expertise is uh, very good and also because my guan yu is expertise whenever he does get that shield from sargon i'll increase my skill damage by 15 percent so that's kind of nice as well so this is a really great pairing and i'm happy about that because it kind of keeps guan yu in the meta for a little bit longer which i i'm happy about uh, we really need the next infantry commander needs to be just dropping tactical nukes from orbits because the infantry is in such a bad place right now which is why i said earlier i'm quitting infantry main and we'll talk about that in just a second but here you can see my equipment here um i am using the sakura fubuki with a talent instead of the gatekeeper shield i feel like i'm gonna probably change this over to the gatekeeper shield for kvk because this i mean there's just not enough health on this march to make this really worth it especially because i'm going to be gaining a bunch of attack from 
the crystal technology from kvk anyway but for now i'm leaving it because why not we have everything here is golden besides that and of course besides this accessory right here i also put the concealed dagger on my guan yu um this is just a nice little debuff that i can apply with this army i figured why not i have the concealed dagger it's a pretty good accessory it's not a primary concern but i think having at least one concealed dagger in your five march lineup is probably a good strategy so putting it on my guan is good because he's infantry and because there's so many other high priority targets right now i think guan yu is getting hit less now than he ever has been uh which is shocking but that's just the, the case i mean if you see a cpo you're gonna hit cpo over guan if you hit if you see a juga leong you're gonna hit him over guan if you see a nevsky you're gonna hit that over guan if you see a Boudica prime you should be hitting that over guan as well if you see a uh Joan of arc you should be hitting that over guan right uh, and then there's all the things that are just not good commanders that you're gonna hit over guan as well so like there's so many things also zhang Yu, if you see that you're gonna hit that over guan so there's so many other commanders to be hitting instead of guan that i feel like putting the concealed dagger here is probably a safe bet and yeah i also have the silent trial with a talent over here as well this is just basically filler because i just don't i've been working on my main gear pieces i have plenty of legendary accessories but i don't have like five rings and five horns right like that's just insane so i threw on the silent trial here um decreasing the target's rage is good and there's not that many ways to do it besides like sargon and nebu uh there might be a couple others that i'm forgetting there but yeah really nice debuff on the silent trial and i think it's kind of slept on i actually think this is a really solid accessory technically the ancient stratagems is better for damage output and during kvk i will probably switch these two okay I'll probably put stratagems on Guan Yu and put the silent trial on the bench. I kind of like the idea of having two debuffing accessories here, just so that way the target is really getting punished. Let's take a look at the formation, the armaments here. You can see we have one inscription. We have two and a half percent extra health, which is really good here. We have 5.9% attack, 4.7% defense and 5.1% health on top of the additional 2.5 here. So that's 7.6% infantry health and 2% March speed, which is nice. Half a percent of all damage. Again, this is lacking in the all damage department, but again it is what it is this is kind of the best that i could do with with what i have the fact that there's a blue here and i have plenty of non-blue things it's like insane that this is actually better than anything else that i have like the armament system is so fundamentally flawed and broken and bad that it's not like i almost want to make a video about it but it's not even worth it like the system is it's un it's unsavable basically so whatever that's just my two cents that's my armament for my guan yu and let's take a look at the talent build here so i came up and grabbed buckler shield this is a little bit of tankiness that guan yu really benefits from and then we went all in on the skill tree okay because i want to pop off Gar sargon's skills and guan skills as much as possible then you can see here i grabbed stronger body for the bonus health we obviously grab undying fury we had bonus um stats that i just threw in the normal attack damage because why not obviously iron spear is very good and then the three points that i had left over i put into the march speed here so two points here and one point here because that gets you nine percent for three points whereas this only gets you six percent for three points so that's a little trick right there if you want bonus march speed for free and that is that moving on to my third army we have nevsky with william and i know you're probably saying omnia what do you what you have Joan of Arc expertise. What's going on here? We're going to talk about that in just a minute. Okay. But Nevsky William is a tried and true, excellent pairing. And I use Nevsky William a lot before I expertised my uh, Nevsky Joan. Okay. And Nevsky doesn't really need an introduction here, but he hits like a truck. He has a really nice defense reduction for the target. If they're swarmed, it's going to be 45%. If you're hitting with all four or five armies. Uh, or three or more armies i should say and honestly you're probably going to be swarming targets if you're running all your marches together in a murder ball which is great you also have a nice distribution of stats here across the board we have attack health and defense as well and then there's some bonus chance of gaining even more health on the expertise here so just really good stats across the board and 20% march speed insane you're also dealing bonus damage to swarmed targets and you have a ton of bonus skill damage on the fourth skill here which is really really nice obviously for Nevsky but also because William is an AoE commander so William does it William is like non-negotiable for a murder ball in my opinion like you need William okay and here's why obviously his damage factor is starting to feel a little bit low these days which is true especially because it is a forward facing rectangle which is wild but attacked troops extra skill damage from buffs cannot take effect for three seconds you're reducing the skill damage bonus that the enemies are getting for three seconds that's an insanely powerful debuff and it is a 30 percent march speed reduction so 
you're going to have a higher probability of catching up with your archers and your infantry by slowing them down with your William. He also brings 20% of cavalry attack and even more cavalry attack on for me. It is the expertise version of the third skill. Normally it's 20% attack here. It's 30. So it's combined total of 50% cavalry attack, which is insane. 15% March speed and bonus damage outside of Alliance territory. Super good stuff here. You also gain bonus instant proc damage to targets that are swarmed, which is really, really good stuff here. And of course the fourth skill is a, it's a superpower. Okay. Cause even at one, you gain defense when your active skill pops. And then if you hit multiple targets, all of your armies and your nearby allies, at least five of them max is going to get 50 rage a second for three seconds. So it's 150 bonus rage even if this is at one skill point but for me i expertise william because i think he's very very good and that means i get 20 percent defense every time my active skill goes off so yeah really excellent pairing here i love the nevsky william it is exceptionally good this is the equipment on here and it's all gold everything baby uh we threw on my other ring and horn here because nevsky puts out so much damage that this is the way to go in my opinion this is the helmet that you saw me craft at the beginning of the video and oh my god baby 14 and a half bonus defense oh okay that's good we also have the heavy armor chest plate a bunch of cavalry health here we also have eight percent cavalry health on the gloves and we have seven and a half percent cavalry health on the boots 12 percent of cavalry health on the legs literally every single piece on here it gives you cavalry health except for your uh helmets and you also get defense from the talented heart of the saint really unless you are a cavalry main or a rally leader you don't ever need to replace heart of the saint in my opinion it's just so good like it's insane it's insane there's very very good stuff here this is a basically a full health build for my uh for my nevsky he's already got the attack covered it in his skills and with william the attack department is good he's already gonna have defense it we're good on the defense department so stacking health here like a madman is a great strategy i probably didn't need ash of the dawn i could have kept the purple talented legs however i wanted to get the bonus uh health here on the iconic crystal and you can't do that with purple gear so that's why i did that all four of these have iconic crystals so yeah the gear on my nevsky is really like this is done like there's nothing that i need to replace here uh, if i ever craft more cavalry gear and i get lucky with the talent i'll replace pieces but this is like i'm i'm not gonna replace the weapon like there's nothing else i have to do here it's perfect this is the perfect setup for me i absolutely love it let's go over the armaments here you can see that we have three inscriptions we have three and a half bonus defense we have 1.5 percent extra skill damage which is great and one percent extra normal attack damage now we have 4.7 percent attack 5.2 percent defense and four percent health no all damage here which really sucks i know i know but uh this is sort of the best that i could do with my armaments and that is that looking at the talent build again full skill tree obviously you want to pop the active skills as much as possible no matter who nevsky is paired with whether he is the primary to william or joan of arc the active skills are what matter the most with these commanders and you just want to get feral nature okay uh feral nature is probably a micro optimization to be completely honest with you guys uh you probably don't need feral nature especially with the horn especially with all the other ways of gaining rage in the field these days but um at the risk of overraging i'm still grabbing feral nature just in case we come up here we grab emblazoned shield we also came over here and grabbed undying fury for the bonus rage and we have nine percent bonus damage to archers Zhuge Liang is so powerful these days you need this okay in the open field you need bonus damage to archers there's no question there now this is another talent build that i might consider okay because i don't know if i really need feral nature okay so i might switch up to this talent build and just try it out i think it might be worth it for me i might be overraging too much much with feral nature so this is something i might switch to but for now this is what i'm using moving on to army number four we have Boudica prime as the primary and Zhuge Liang as the secondary now as you can see here all of my stuff is actually on my Zhuge Liang because right now it's better in canyon to do to do Zhuge Liang primary with ysg secondary so all my stuff is on my Zhuge Liang but when I get into open field fighting, we will switch over to Boudica. All right. Now this pairing is pretty much the best pair in the game right now. As far as I can tell, uh, even with 12 coming into the game, I just, this in the open field, I actually do think this is the best pairing here. We have Boudica's massive single target damage and the debuff on this active skill is nuts, dude. It is so good. Okay. 
the target takes increased 35 percent increased still skill damage for three seconds and a massive march speed reduction very good stuff this is the same march speed reduction as william except his is aoe but her other debuff is wild and she's dealing so much damage here okay so all the targets if you're swarming something that target is going to take 35 percent increased skill dam skill damage from everything heading it okay all the skill damage we talked about in this video Boudica is making that skill damage even more powerful by herself which is wild that's one of the reasons why I think she is one of the best commanders in the game right now she also gives you 30 percent attack 10 percent March speed wish it was a little more 15 20 would have been nice there uh and then after you have less than 80 percent of troops remaining you get an instant 30 percent bonus to your defense I don't know why they did that I wish they would have just given us like a flat 20 percent across the board at all times honestly but whatever it is what it is third skill here says you take 25 percent less skill damage while on the map that's some great tankiness that we really like to see for archers and when you take skill damage your next normal attack is going to deal more damage that part of the skill doesn't really matter fourth skill here has five percent bonus damage to infantry which is nice and you have a nice little healing factor here seven second cooldown the expertise here says that you have 10 percent more archer damage and you have an 80 percent chance to remove control effects such as the silence from guan yu i really like this uh, i also made a video talking about whether or not the expertise is worth it for Boudica. i did a whole bunch of simulation testing with her and we found out that for most players 5551 is the best place to stop it is almost never worth it to get the expertise for Boudica. I know that sounds crazy because it's so good, but like the the data is the data. So you can check out that video if you missed it. It's on the channel, but I did actually expertise Boudica. I think this expertise is nice. Was it expensive? Yes, it was, but she's done. She's beautiful. She is perfect. And then of course, Zhuge Liang, ugh, bro, this is king of the open field these days. 2000 damage factor to five targets in a circle. It is ridiculous. And they also deal 15% less skill damage for three seconds. Bro, it's so good. This active skill is so good. The damage output is insanity on top of a powerful debuff. He also gets 30% health and 5% increased damage. Absolute sicko mode, okay? Zhuge Liang goes into wacko mode, basically. And also, he has a 50% chance of removing control effects like silence, which is another mega reason why it's not worth getting the expertise on Boudica, because you're probably going to pair with him, and you already have a chance to remove, like this really devalues Boudica's expertise by a ton here and also has a good chance of dealing instant proc damage when you do that you also get 20 percent bonus skill damage and a 10 percent chance to get 50 percent increased attack for three seconds good stuff and the fourth skill you get 10 percent increased damage with the marquee effect which with the expertise you're starting the battle with 10 percent increased damage for 15 seconds and then when you pop an active skill you deal 1500 damage factor to three targets in a forward-facing fan-shaped area so even more insane aoe on this commander it is ridiculous and you also gain 30 rage like brother in christ there's a rage engine on him as well this is the best open field commander in the game right now no question he is insane massive damage the only downside with him is the march speed that does kind of stink he's a little bit slow okay uh Boudica luckily has a little bit of march speed here and honestly i will probably put a flag on them which is like shocking for a late game player like me but we'll talk about that in a second this is the equipment that i have for my archers is this the best equipment in the game no is this good for open field fighting totally fine this is very good for open field fighting given how little i've invested in this set i got super lucky with the talent on the chest and the gloves literally just one shot at both of them no no problems at all it was easy peasy okay i don't know why other people don't do that like just get the talent like just just get it when you like what uh so yes bunch of archer attack on the chest and of course we have a bunch of archer attack on the gloves so you know is it the best stat no but i have iconic crystals in them so i get more defense and attack as well you get defense on the uh, helmet and also defense on the legs these are the revival set which means we also gain bonus attack here which is nice you also get health on the boots and you get defense on the sword i don't know why a sword would give you defense no idea there but you do and again just like the heart of the saint i think the golden age like unless you are like a giga chad well uh you know archer main or rally uh, lead like you never really have to replace the golden age in my opinion it's just it's really good and the legendary weapons are so expensive it's there's really no point in doing it honestly there's so many higher priorities so i'll probably never replace this uh eventually i'll probably replace the uh you know the the helmet and the legs but we'll have to see if i ever really want to if i ever build a second archer set 
then certainly that would be the way I would go I would just replace these two and move them over to a second army now I also have Mora's web here and this is not gonna stay um I'm gonna tell you in a moment what army I will be putting this on so stay tuned for that uh, so I will be moving this around and then I just had the lanes amulet chilling sitting around okay so I figured I might as well put it in there uh, I think Boudica will be a prime target so reducing counterattack damage you take is nice but there's a, a good chance that I'll be replacing Moore's web with um the flag which I talked about before um it, this actually does have a archer talent here you can see uh so we're gonna get a little bit bonus March speed on this which I think is gonna be pretty crucial so uh overall I'm happy about that let's take a look at my armaments here you could see that we have only one inscription we have two and a half percent bonus defense we have six percent attack 7.8 percent defense and 3.8 percent health with 2.9 percent all damage baby let's go that is a lot of bonus damage for armaments honestly I'm really happy about that especially because Budoka Jugaliang like the all damage on them man they're hitting like a truck okay so love that and then as far as talent builds go um let's pop over to our Boudicca to look at that this is what I'm rocking okay we grab rejuvenate and we grab clarity again skipping feral nature for the same reason that I talked about with Nevsky I might just be overraging so there's no point uh we grab obviously razor sharp very good talent here for bonus rage and then we came all the way up to whistling arrows because what else are we gonna put the points in right definitely not the versatility tree and we don't really need the attack from full quiver so might as well go all the way to the top here 10 percent chance of 15 percent all damage for two seconds I think that's pretty good obviously is this better at five yes but I have nowhere to take those points from so it's stuck at three and I think that that's totally fine this I think is probably the best talent build for Boudica because I mean you just there's you have to take out so much from the archer tree just to grab feral nature like the bonus venomous sting with with Jugal Young. oh my god is so good bro Phoenix tail arrows maybe isn't the best maybe that's what you get rid of to get feral nature I don't know but for me I think this is the best build for Boudica no question moving on to my fifth and final army you might think that it's infantry but I'm quitting infantry main which means I have two infantry armies one cavalry one archer and a second cavalry army okay that is what the future of the Omniarch account looks like we are going to have two infantry two cavalry one archer that is my current plan if the next infantry uh release is doo-doo then I might just eventually whittle it down to one infantry if I if it really gets to that I don't know why they're so they're so rude to infantry players okay um but my final army is as I said cavalry and I'm going to be replacing obviously I'm not going to use Minamoto okay it's going to be um Hua Chibing, which is the new cavalry commander which has not uh, come I mean he's in the game but the wheel has not come around yet I will be expertising this legendary commander yes I know very shocking um but I think as an open field commander he is excellent as a rally commander he will not be very good I don't think for pretty much anything else he won't be very good either um so yeah great at open field which is exactly what I need I will be doing well, primary with Joan of Arc secondary uh and the synergy there is very good as you saw again in my testing video if you missed it check it out on the channel we did 160 battle reports uh with Hua Chibing, so definitely check it out if you missed it to give you guys an idea if he's worth it or not for you um I think this is a replacement for Zhang Yu for sure in the open field not for rallies obviously but there's other rally options now here we have 2700 bro single target damage on him is nuts and a 50 percent march speed reduction so now we have three of my armies have March speed reduction on the active skill okay we have Boudica we have Hua and we have William also on the Nevsky okay um the March speed reduction is huge here because you saw that I have two infantry and I need the enemy to be slowed down if my infantry ever has a chance at catching up to them okay um so really powerful active skill that fits very well into my five army lineup we have 40 percent attack which is nuts and we have 15 percent March speed outside of Alliance territory as well as five percent bonus damage to archers so once again like with Tarek right Tarek gets 10 percent bonus damage to cows most commanders get only five so Tarek gets that bonus there which is nice I wish this March speed was universal the fact that it's only in enemy territory or outside of Alliance territory really sucks I don't like that um that feels like a d like it feels like a decrease from what we got from Zhang Yu whatever um his third skill is great this is like the bread and butter for him massive skill damage reduced rage requirements which means you're going to be popping off your Joan of Arc's active skill 
even faster in the open field with a 30 percent skill damage bonus oh man it's so good plus you get 30 percent defense when attacking enemy troops not strongholds so keep that in mind and you get 20 percent bonus skill damage with a healing factor and then of course the expertise here bumps that up to 35 percent defense 25 percent skill damage so literally joan of arc's first double aoe is gonna have 55 percent bonus skill damage insane bro insane okay and then if you ever defeat a and sad face an enemy you're, i'm gonna get the autumn wind effect which is really nice and of course the synergy here with joan of arc is obvious she has with her fourth skill the double aoe here with 2000 damage factor three targets absolutely insane and the 60 rage regeneration for up to three of your armies or allies oh my god bro super good stuff bonus damage here we also have 20 percent more cavalry attack on top of the 40 you get from fa we also get 10 percent march speed which is really good since fuzz is conditional and it's even bonus outside of territory normal attack damage five percent cab damage more normal attack damage for a second that's kind of pointless and then the expertise here gives five percent counter attack damage and five percent more damage as well so Joan of Arc is just a generic uh you know sort of AoE machine and she gets 10 percent cab health which obviously you don't get any from Hua and I am a little bit worried that he's going to be a little bit squishy but the 35 percent defense should help him out a ton there so hopefully this goes well um I think this is going to be a really nice combination now as far as gear goes this is going to be the gear on my Hua it's basically uh almost as good as my main gear obviously there's no accessories and there's no iconics here no talents or anything but as far as the legs go gladiator with the talent is basically almost as good as the regular ash of the dawn the legs that gives you 12 percent. this gives you 10 and a half percent but for a purple I mean that's I mean it's so much cheaper it's it's very good okay then of course we did grab the legendary chest and gloves for the health and then today um we moved this helmet over from our Nevsky because we crafted a second helmet uh and here we have 11 percent defense okay so we obviously keep the heart of the saint that's never going to change we also have the silent trial here uh and then we're going to be moving this flag is going to go to my archer march and mora's web is going to go here to my hua uh, mora's web is great for defense reduction but also it's a powerful march speed reduction on the enemy if it is a cavalry unit okay so eight percent stacks up to three times and it's a 30 percent chance of it occurring so basically if you have mora's web you really want to put it on an on a cavalry march basically your fastest march should have mora's web on it if you have one um i don't think most people should craft a mora's web to be honest with you at this point but I crafted it a while ago and I'm going to be putting this on my Hua with my um, Joan of Arc and we're going to see how that goes okay um as far as the armaments go this is my sort of second armament set for um cavalry we have two inscriptions we have bonus march speed and bonus march speed so we go four percent bonus march speed as well again that's kind of by chance I didn't plan this but I think this is going to be nice given what I'm doing with this army which is catching up to fast enemies slowing them down with with Hua and with Moore's web and then hopefully the rest of my armies can catch up and keep them slowed with the all the other slowdown that I have we have 5.4 percent attack 1.5% defense and 9.2% health with 1.3% all damage. I'm really happy with this, especially as a secondary a cavalry set. I think this is really good stuff here. I really like this. This may even be better than my main cavalry set. Uh, I guess not because there's a lot of bonus stuff on the inscriptions here, but there's no all damage. So yeah, I think the all damage makes up for the lack of, in of inscriptions, I guess. It's a really good second armament set, honestly. Uh, and of course, what we're going to be testing in this KVK, at least for me, anecdotally, is will Hua with Joan perform well? If it doesn't perform super well, I'll probably move Joan back to Nevsky and put William behind Hua and we'll be Gucci there. Um, the debuff, as far as March speed goes with that, is a little bit redundant. So that's kind of unfortunate but we really just want to maximize the damage output from Joan okay so if we can do that with Hua great if not then we'll move her back to Nevsky and we'll just keep rocking with the Nevsky Joan that's going to be the strategy and then as far as talents for Hua obviously I don't have him yet but I will probably do either this or this just like I said with Nevsky um I will probably do this I will probably risk overraging just to make sure that I really pop that first skill as fast as possible that's probably what I'm gonna do I'll go full skill tree and then go all the way up here with the same talent that I mentioned before so that's it I have transitioned from being an infantry main to an infantry cav hybrid and then we'll see hopefully the next yo see here's the thing if the next infantry commanders are insanely good I have a third set 
okay this is a really solid infantry set we have four legendaries here and of course i can adjust the uh accessories so at any point i could go back to being infantry main i could go back to running three infantry marches but for that to be the case the two new com uh, commanders would have to be so good that it would have to be worth benching like obviously it's not gonna be my archer army so i would have to bench like what william and somebody else like I, I just don't see that happening i don't see that being the case right so i'm i don't expect to go back to being full infantry main but that is it that is my five army lineup right now who knows if i'm actually gonna run five armies a lot of times what ends up happening is i run out of a certain troop type like i'll use a lot of archers for rallies for my kingdom and i run out of archers right which kind of sucks because Boudica and jugle is super good in the field but it is what it is right so that's pretty much it guys um if you enjoyed this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel it's on it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video comment down below your thoughts on this what do you think about my five army lineup do you think that it's good do you think that it's mid could it be better if i could improve it let me know in the comment section below with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace